it's very interesting. I'm I'm um I'm kind of curious. You know, you, you spent obviously um a lot of time um at Alphabet and Google um, or just obviously honing the craft that you were just talking about now. Hey, any kind of interesting stories of a product that was particularly difficult to communicate um, uh, that that you had to workshop? Sure. So I'll I'll tell you about my adventures with the smart contact lens. So. Um, this was, I think we announced it in January, 2014. And at that time we were still part of Google. And at that point, um, I mean, everyone was starting to get tuned into, whoa, Google is stretching into all parts of your life and all the data. And this was going to be the first time that Google was going to go like on or slash in your body as in a contact lens right. on your eye. Right. with a little computer chip and a teeny little um, glucose sensor. Because the moonshot there was, um, could we make a contact lens with this teeny tiny glucose sensor and teeny tiny computer chip that could um, measure the glucose in tears such that it would be easier for people with diabetes to keep track of their blood sugar, like if we could prove the correlation between the tears and the blood. So uh, we had to figure out how to explain this to the world. And Brian Otis, who was the, um, the creator of this project, he had come from the University of Washington where he had proven this in a lab, uh, as in he could get the sensors really tiny and he was attaching them to like the sides of plastic water bottles in a lab to see if it could measure oh, things in, in, in yes. liquid. So that was as far as he got it as an academic. And the reason he came to X was because he wanted to actually see if this teeny tiny miniaturized electronics could be used in in real applications and and actually help people in their in their daily lives and so we had gone through the you know building contact lenses and we were ready to move into into some clinical trials we had we had done some early trials that that were promising um and the challenge was how do you explain this such that the world hears the oh my gosh we're going to help potentially people with diabetes but we steer clear of two third rails, essentially. One was the FDA. So the FDA does not like it when researchers and ambitious types start mouthing off about what their medical device will do before the medical device has gone through trials and been proven to say it does what it does. So we had to be super clear not to tweak the regulators. And we also had to watch out for the, pe the people who were watching Google to be like, oh my God, Google's coming into my body to take all the things. And so, uh, so Brian had never worked on on an, a big unveil like this, and and ha certainly had never worked with uh, the kinds of you know journalists and others who watch Google so closely. And I kept saying to him, we have to find this really inspirational and accessible way to um, make this land on the inspiring side of the line, not the terrifying, creepy side of the line. Now, part of this was storytelling with images. So if you go back and look at our website. Uh, X dot company, there are beautiful images of this elegant, magical looking contact lens on, balanced on the tip of your finger. But we also had to get over that kind of yuck weird factor of like, wait, is this a computer chip stuck on my eye? Like what? And so one day we were in the lab and Brian showed me the, the, the glucose sensor and computer chip and he put it on the tip of my finger with uh, tweezers. And I said, oh, it's like glitter. Now, keep in mind, he's a PhD in electrical engineering. The man looked at me with this deep horror on his face. And he's yes. like, it's not like glitter. It's like one of the most incredibly impressive intellectual innovations on the planet. Yes. How dare you, little fluffy word PR girl? Like, how dare you? And I was like, yeah, but Brian, like, this is how we get people to understand what this is so that then they can appreciate the impressiveness of the achievement and its potential. You got to anchor them in something they know, which in this case is, it's like glitter. And so we sort of agreed to disagree in the moment. And then at about 10 o'clock that night, I got a link uh, in my email to a PDF from the, Inter from the International Glitter Standards Foundation. Uh, Brian had researched the tech specs of glitter uh, and actually, <laughs> glitter is the same dimensions as his little chip. And so he's like, okay, you can use glitter. And the rest is history. <laughs> Fascinating. That's interesting. And that's a great mnemonic, um, I guess, for everyone to think of what their glitter equivalent is. Um, 
We um, also, by the way, spent a ton of time educating people on the problem of diabetes and what it's like to live with diabetes. I was talking earlier about yeah, yeah, yeah problems. So in 2014, uh, everyone was aware that diabetes is a disease that a lot of people are living with, but because so many people are living with it, it had really um, masked the fact that it is a, quite a dangerous um, disease and uh, it is a, a big burden uh, on you to, to manage it effectively. Uh, one of my, we interviewed a bunch of Googlers to understand what it was like to live with diabetes, either as a, you know, to have it yourself or to, um, you know, to have a family member with it. And a friend of mine said, Courtney, it's like having a part-time job on top of my daily life, uh, just managing her diabetes. And I was like, Phew. so I, so actually, okay, so this is a three-part story of how do you tell these stories? And it, it's beautiful visuals helped us in this case an analogy that helped people anchor in the, you know, the reality so then they could hear, feel your future as well. And then thirdly, anchoring them in the problem in a really emotional way to cut through the yeah, yes. So yeah, that re it's really stuck with me. That's fascinating and probably a, a great point to end on. Thank you so much. I mean, I, I really enjoyed um, both the, the hearing the origins about the project, um, uh, the, the reasoning behind it are, um, I appreciate you humoring me with my Richard Feynman walk through there in the middle, but I do think that's quite helpful for anyone kind of thinking about um, how to how to fund something high stakes. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, as a, as a, as a, as a citizen uh, and, and humanoid of this planet, I guess we're all really thankful to you for your work. So keep it up with the glitter. Uh, well, thanks for having me. And I really do believe we need more moonshot factories and more moonshot takers. And honestly, so much of what's stopping us is the sense that it's someone else's job and it could be all of our, all of our jobs. So that's, let's live into that potential. Great. I think you've earned yourself a few cold emails. So, uh, you know, apologies and thanks for that. Thank you again, <laughs> thanks Courtney. So much. Take care. Bye. -bye. Bye.